Well, we are going to answer two age-old questions. The first of which is, is it scone or is it scone? Now, the person who will know is Richard from the Devon Scone or Scone Company. What do you say, Richard? Really, did I call it scone, but you can call it whatever you like as long as you enjoy it. Yeah, well, I've always called it scone as well. And, of course, there's nothing more typical of Devon than a cream tea, is it? Yeah, it's actually one of the top three things that tourists actually talk about is coming to Devon for a Devon cream tea. So that's why we're here, really, is to promote it and really, you know, give somebody a, a bit of taste of luxury, an affordable luxury, really. Which brings me to the second question. Is it jam on top of cream or cream on top of jam? Ah, well, you see, this is a very political question, but as we're this side of the border, OK, it should always be cream first, then jam. When you get your passport and go across to Cornwall, then it changes. OK, but really, as long as you enjoy it, you do it you however you like. You do it however you like, you and, know. And uh, the jams, tell us about the jams, because that's an important aspect of a, of a cream that's tea, isn't it? That's very important, because, I mean, we, we make a strawberry jam, and I think that's the, the quintessential thing. I only make it in batches of seven jars, so it's a very unique product, and it's actually got fruit in it, lumps of fruit so unlike a lot of the mass-produced things you actually can have a strawberry and again it's that taste of summer that sort of again luxury you think oh there's a whole a big dollop of clotted cream and a whole strawberry there what more could you want now, what about uh, slightly more off-centre things like cheese scones? How do you stand on that? Yeah, well, that's fine. I mean, they're very, very popular. You can do a savoury cream tea, you know, a cheese scone, some cream cheese, some smoked salmon. It's just something a bit different. And a, bit, a lot of people don't have a sweet tea, so it is a nice change. Also, instead of a roll with soup, it's a really good thing to have. So it's something we've seen that's going more and more popular as we've gone along. Now, one of the things for people coming here today uh, is that you're actually doing a takeaway cream tea, aren't you? Yeah, yeah we're, we're doing a little bit of paradise to take away with you. Um, so you, you get some scones, some jam and some cream and a couple of cups of tea and away you go and you can sit down somewhere in this lovely weather and enjoy it somewhere. But if, you, if it's still raining, you can take it home. <laughs> and I'm guessing that, you know, for visitors uh, to the region, that this is going to be one of the things that they'll feel they've got to try when you come to the West Coast. You've got to have a cream tea. Absolutely. And this is one of the reasons we set the business up. There's so many, I would say, bad examples. Samples. You know, I've been as far north as Bristol and had uh, uh, cream out of a spray can. Oh, no! You know, and I nearly, I nearly fell off my chair. Um, <laughs> so that's why we set it up to say, look, if people are coming from all over the world, they need a really good cream tea to remember. Yeah. Uh, and that's something we're, we're very passionate about. And what about the cream? What, what's, the, what's the essence of a good cream? Well, the essence is, is high butterfat content. We, we use Langage, which is a, a Guernsey and Jersey cream. So it's very much more golden than, than the Cornish or the, the Somerset cream. And I think that, that gives it another great luxurious feel to it. You know, it's not just another cream. It's a very special cream. It's produced in relatively small quantities. And uh, I, I like to make my own bread. I've never, I've never been brave enough to make scone. So what, what do you need to know to make a good scone? I think you have to be gentle as number one. Number two, don't cut them too thin. And number three is just trust yourself, you know. We use buttermilk in our scones, which helps the acid work. It's all very chemistry orientated, but it helps the acid work and gets, um, gets the baking powder to rise. Um, but just be gentle. Don't, you know, you're not making bread. That's the key factor. You're making scones. There's a big difference. OK, and, and experiment, I suppose. Try a few different things. Try whatever you, you know. Be, don't be afraid to try. Cooking's all about having a go, you yeah. know. And, and we, all, we all try these things. And sometimes you're going to get biscuits, and sometimes you're going to get a great result. And when you find the great result, stick with it. If you've got, if you've got, if you take home some scones today, for instance, I mean, we, you know that a loaf of bread will last maybe a day or maybe a week, depending mm. on how much preservatives in it. What's the story with scones? Do they last longer or, or no? Shorter time, relatively, two or three days. In a freezer, they last for three months. But the thing is, is there are no artificial preservatives, and that's the whole idea of it. It's designed to be enjoyed quickly. Yeah. It's not designed to be sat on a shelf for three months and then. Oh, there you are. It's still the same as when it was baked. And that's a very important factor. We don't put anything like that in there. You know, you have it today or tomorrow and that's it or put it in the freezer. Well, I think we better have a look at some of these lovely products here. So um, do you want to talk us through what we've, what we've got here, Yeah, Richard? well, we've got the, the standard range. We've got, obviously, the cheese scone we were talking about, which oh, yeah. you know, was using a West Country cheese and some mustard. Then we've got the fruit scone. Now, classically, that should be with butter. Right. It's always been a thing of butter with a fruit scone. Uh, and then we've got the, the real, you know, nice big plumptious plain scones, you know. I, again, I think there's another thing about having these tight little things about, you know, size of a 10 pence piece. You can't get any cream on it. It's no good. If you're really good, you can cut this into three and get three portions. It's fantastic. And with the fruit scones, I mean, what, what fruit have you got in there? It's just sultanas in there, plain right. sultanas. Um, again, a lot of people try different things by putting cranberries in and raisins and things like that. But sultanas is the classic.
And over here, we've got some of your jams. Do you make these? Yeah, we make all of these. These are uh, all made in very, very small batches. Um, this is our strawberry preserve. It's just won a Taste of the West gold. Uh, and also, it's won a two-star gold from the Great Taste Awards, the National Awards. But again, it's only made in batches of seven jars. Right. So I don't make thousands of jars at a time. So do you, do, you, do you find that you can be a connoisseur of jams in the way that, you know, somebody will sip a single malt whiskey and they'll know the difference to another malt whiskey? I think do jams go like that? Very much so, because it all depends on the ingredients you put in. Again, there's no preservatives in there apart from the sugar. It's a classical jam thing. Uh, and one of the comments from the judges was it's a taste of summer. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to capture. And, but a jam, of course, a jam you can keep, can't you? I mean, it is oh, a preserve. Yeah. That's the preservative the with the sugar will make yeah. it last six or seven months. Yeah. And that's where it came from in the old days of keeping the fruit in. When it's the best quality, you keep it for the when it isn't at the best quality. Yeah. And that's the whole idea of it. I love the passion, Richard. I mean, it's just beautiful. And you, I mean, I, I know it's... Um, it, you probably say, or oh, cream tea, four o'clock in the afternoon, but quite honestly, I would eat that any time of the day. It just looks I gorgeous. I think you can. You can eat it any time of the day or night if you want to. You know, it's one, it's one of those little treats that always makes somebody smile. If you put enough jam and cream on, when they get it all over their nose, you can't help but smile at them. And that's a great thing. It brings joy to a lot of people. Well, there you are. A bit of Devonshire summer with our friend Richard from the Devon Scone Company.